Welcome to English Practice Stories. Hello, my dear friends. How are you? Let's start the story. In the oppressive silence of my room, I quite often find myself laying awake each night contemplating my dreams. With each passing night, an unsettling sensation creeps over, as if an unseen presence lingers in the shadows. I lay in bed paralyzed in fear, watching the silhouettes dance in the darkness. It wasn't always like this, no. There was a time when night was a sanctuary and my dreams a haven for peace, until I moved into this damned house. History creaked through the floorboards and was carved into the very foundations themselves. The once majestic manor is now a decrepit reminder through the passage of time. I bought the house six months ago, drawn to its serene charm and grand architecture. Little did I know it hid behind a facade of charm and elegance. Like the previous owner before me, I was warned of the house's dark history, a cautionary tale whispered by the locals. The realtor's eyes, though masked with a veneer of professionalism, carried an unspoken dread, a silent plea not to venture into the tangled narrative of the property's past. Are you sure about this, Mr. Johnson? I'm sure some of the other houses would be sufficient for your needs, the realtor asked, his eyes showing dread. I've heard rumors, but doesn't every house have its own tale? Besides, I'm not one to shy away from a history lesson, I said, shrugging off his warnings. His professional veneer shifted a bit as he hesitated before speaking. This place has history, all right. Quite darker than most. Are you sure you want to continue with this? Ignoring the warnings, I grinned at him confidently. I'm not one to back down from a challenge. Let's sign. As the ink dried on the contract, the realtor's eyes mirrored a silent plea. He said, Please reconsider. This house has a way of turning dreams into nightmares. I chuckled nervously, dismissing his concerns. Old houses come with stories, my friend. I'm ready for a bit of history, even if it's a tad dark. He sighed, history indeed. But remember, not all tales are meant to be lived. I'm a house flipper. Any house close to 100 years old could be deemed haunted. I remarked casually, scanning the vintage details of the aging structure. The realtor's eyes betrayed a flicker of concern. This one's different. It's not just about its age. It's about the stories that linger in its corners. I chuckled, dismissing his caution. Stories are just stories. I'm here to give this place a modern makeover and a fresh start. In the beginning, the house seemed almost welcoming, its faded grandeur casting a nostalgic charm that belied its sinister reputation. The first few days passed without incident, as if the tales of horror were nothing more than fanciful whispers carried on the wind. I explored every corner of the old mansion, 
marveling at its architectural beauty and imagining the lives that once thrived within its walls. As the sun dipped below the horizon and darkness descended upon the house, subtle changes began to manifest. Shadows seemed to dance in the corners of my vision, and strange noises echoed through the empty halls. Voices are beckoning me to finish the house. Voices were insisting I not sell the house because I was already home. At first, I dismissed them as figments of my imagination, the product of an overactive mind fueled by ghost stories and superstition. But as the days stretched into weeks, the presence lurking within the house grew more pronounced, its malevolent energy seeping into every crack and crevice. Sleep became elusive, plagued by restless dreams and the sensation of being watched. I found myself drawn to the French-style windows, peering out into the inky darkness that covered the garden, searching for answers that remained just out of reach. As I lay in bed, the events of the day replayed in my mind like a haunting melody, each note tinged with a sense of unease. Despite the comfort of my surroundings, a chill crept over me, causing goosebumps to erupt on my skin. Outside, the wind howled like a banshee, rattling the windows and sending shivers down my spine. Shadows danced on the walls, their twisted shapes flickering in the dim moonlight that filtered through the curtains. I pulled the covers tighter around me, seeking solace in their warmth, but the feeling of unease persisted, gnawing at the edges of my consciousness like a persistent whisper. And then, just as I began to drift into an uneasy sleep, I heard it, a soft, wet sound, almost smacking. My heart pounded in my chest as I strained to listen, my eyes scoping out the darkness for any clue, my senses on high alert for any sign of danger. For a moment, all was still. The only sound was the steady rhythm of my own breathing. But then, in the corner of my room, a silhouette stood. Adjusting my eyes, I could make out that it was most definitely a woman, but her facial features shrouded in shadows. I lay paralyzed, my mind racing with thoughts. Was it merely a trick of the imagination, or had something truly sinister invaded my sanctuary? She stood there, unmoving, her form illuminated only by the faint moonlight filtering through the curtains. Her features were obscured, shrouded in darkness, yet I could feel her gaze boring into me, piercing through the veil of night. My heart pounded in my chest, each beat a thunderous drum echoing in the silence of the room. I wanted to scream, to flee from the terror that held me captive, but my voice was caught in my throat, suffocated by the weight of my fear. For what felt like an eternity, we remained locked in a silent standoff. I blinked, hopeful that the manifestation from my mind would vanish. But when my eyes opened, she was closer, just standing there. 
Her head leaned over to her left side. I lay there, trembling and alone, grappling with the terrifying reality of what I was witnessing. Was she merely a figment of my imagination, a trick of the mind conjured by the shadows of the night? Or was she something far more sinister, a harbinger of doom lurking in the depths of the darkness? Relief washed over me as I blinked, unable to believe my eyes. In an instant, the woman who had stood before me vanished, leaving behind the pungent smell of copper in the air. I sat there, my breath coming in ragged gasps, my heart still racing with the adrenaline of terror. Had it all been a trick of the mind, a hallucination born from the depths of my imagination? I had been working on this house vigilantly for weeks. Had I overexerted myself? With trembling hands, I reached out to touch the empty space where she had stood just moments before, half expecting her to materialize once more. But there was nothing, only the stillness of the night, and the soft glow of the moon casting shadows on the walls. As days passed, my fascination with the house grew into an all-consuming obsession. Never in my career had I become more determined to preserve every original piece of architecture and every intricate detail engraved into the house. The whispers inside the house seemed to follow me wherever I went, becoming more and more insistent on the continuous work on the house. Each night she visited me in my dreams. Some nights were dreams inside of dreams, but I always felt I was wide awake and could not scream. As I lay in bed, Enveloped by the stillness of the night, I could feel her presence drawing near, a cold chill creeping into the room with every step she took. Her silhouette would materialize in the darkness, her ethereal form bathed in the soft glow of the moonlight streaming through the window. She never spoke, but some nights when the moonlight was just right, I could see her eyes. Her eyes held a silent plea, a longing for release from the torment that bound her to my dreams. I wanted to reach out to her to offer some semblance of comfort in the endless void of her existence, but fear held me back. There was something unnerving about her presence, something that brought me great dread. And so, night after night, I would lie in bed, unable to escape the relentless gaze of the spectral woman as she watched over me with a silent intensity. Her visits were a constant reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the threshold of my consciousness, a darkness that threatened to consume me if I dared to confront it. But as the nights stretched on and her visits became routine, a strange sense of familiarity began to settle over me. Despite the fear and uncertainty that her presence evoked, I uncovered something that began to answer the questions I've had since living here. I had descended into the depths of the old mansion's basement. The air grew thick and musty with the faint smell of copper entering my nostrils once again, as I navigated the narrow staircase. 
The only sound was the faint echo of my own footsteps. The silhouette of the woman kept manifesting herself as I made my way further, as if she were guiding me. As I reached the bottom, my gaze fell upon a pile of old newspapers strewn across the floor, their yellowed pages curling at the edges with age. With trembling hands, I reached out to pick one up, the headlines blurring before my eyes as I read of a tragedy that had unfolded years ago. The article spoke of a family torn apart by violence, their lives shattered by a senseless act of murder. I felt a chill run down my spine as I read the details of the grisly crime, each word like a dagger piercing my soul. But it was the photograph that accompanied the articles that sent a shockwave of horror through me, a grainy image of the young woman, her eyes staring out from the faded print with intensity. The aberration stood in the corner, but this time the sounds of sobbing could be heard. Then I was flooded with the realization that this woman was the young girl in the picture. The article was dated 1937, only two years after the house was built. Its faded print was barely legible as I strained to decipher the words. With a sense of unease gnawing at my gut, I began to read. Local Family Tragedy Rocks Quiet Community In a shocking turn of events, the peaceful town of Clearwater was shaken to its core by a brutal act of violence that claimed the lives of the Peterson family. According to authorities, the bodies of John and Elizabeth Peterson, along with their young daughter Emily, were discovered in their home late last night. Neighbors reported hearing screams coming from the Peterson residence, prompting a concerned citizen to alert the police. When officers arrived on the scene, Elizabeth and Emily were found in their beds, dismembered. John was found in his study with a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. As investigators work to unravel the mystery behind the heinous crime, speculation runs rampant throughout the community. Some believe it to be part of a pagan ritual, while others whisper of darker forces at play. The tragedy has left Clearwater reeling, its residents grappling with the loss of innocence in a town once untouched by violence. As the investigation continues, one thing remains certain. The wounds left by the Peterson family's untimely demise will take years to heal, if they ever do. I stood frozen in horror. The words of the article echoed in my mind, each syllable a chilling reminder of the tragedy that had unfolded within the very walls of the old mansion. As I sifted through the pile of old newspapers, each article revealed a new layer of tragedy that had unfolded within the walls of the old mansion. The headlines told a harrowing tale of lives cut short and families torn apart, each one a chilling reminder of the darkness that had plagued the house for generations. One article detailed the story of the Johnson family, who suffered the same fate, leaving behind a barrage of unanswered questions.
Another recounted the tragic death of the Smiths, whose bodies had been discovered in a state of grotesque mutilation, their faces frozen in expressions of terror. As I read through the articles, the old mansion had been a house of death long before I had set foot within its walls, a cursed monument to the sins of the past. With each new revelation, the pieces of the puzzle slowly began to fall into place. The whispers, the shadows, the spectral woman, they were all manifestations of the darkness that had taken hold of the house, a malevolent force that hungered for blood and despair. As I dove deeper into the pile of old newspapers, I uncovered a series of articles that sent a shiver down my spine. They spoke of a dark chapter in the history of the old mansion. According to the articles, the land upon which the house stood had once been sacred ground, an ancient Indian burial ground that held the spirits of the ancestors. The Petersons, who claimed the land, had ignored the warnings, choosing instead to desecrate the sacred ground and build their home upon its hallowed soil. As I read on, I learned that many of the trees and stones that had once adorned the burial ground had been harvested and refined into the very fabric of the house itself. The walls, the floors, even the foundation, they all bore the imprint of the land's bloody history, a testament to the sins of those who had come before. With a sinking heart, I realized the true nature of the darkness that had taken hold of the old mansion. It was not merely a haunted house, but a cursed monument to the atrocities committed against the native people, a reminder of the blood that had been spilled in the name of greed and conquest. And as I stared down at the articles spread out before me, I knew that I could no longer ignore the truth. The whispers, the shadows, Emily, the manifestations of spirits, some vengeful, others poor souls that ended up in unfortunate circumstances. I knew what I had to do. The house, no, not a house. An apparatus for the other world had to be destroyed. It had to burn. I made my way upstairs, determined to find fuel. As I reached for the front door, my hand hesitated midair, a sudden wave of apprehension washing over me. Something wasn't right. The door that had once served as the entrance to the old mansion now seemed to lead nowhere, its threshold covered in darkness. With a furrowed brow, I pushed open the door, expecting to step out onto the front porch. But instead of the familiar sight of the overgrown garden and the winding driveway, I was met with an abyss, a yawning void stretching out before me, swallowing the remnants of the old mansion hole. I blinked in disbelief, unable to comprehend what I was seeing. How could the front door lead to nowhere? As I peered into the darkness beyond the threshold, a chill ran down my spine, and the hairs on the back of my neck stood on end. It was as if the void itself was alive, pulsating with a malevolent energy 
that sent shivers down my spine. With a deep breath, I stepped through the threshold, steeling myself for whatever lay on the other side. The darkness enveloped me like a suffocating blanket, obscuring my vision and leaving me disoriented and vulnerable. The smell of copper and iron was now stronger than ever before. As I ventured deeper into the abyss beyond the front door, my senses heightened by the oppressive darkness that surrounded me, I caught sight of something in the distance, a bright light shining like a beacon amidst the abyss. I quickened my pace, the light growing steadily brighter with each step I took. It seemed to pulse with rhythmic energy, beckoning me forward with an irresistible allure. As I drew closer, the source of the light came into focus, a doorway framed by an ethereal glow that seemed to radiate from within. It stood out against the darkness like a guiding star, offering a glimmer of hope amidst the desolation of the abyss. With a sense of hope, I approached the doorway, the light bathing me in its warm embrace. As I crossed the threshold, the darkness that had enveloped me for so long seemed to recede, replaced by a sense of peace and tranquility. On the other side of the doorway was my bedroom, the familiar sight of my bed, the dresser, and the soft glow of the lamp filled me with a sense of surreal deja vu. But as I glanced around the room, I noticed subtle differences, a sense of clarity and peace that had been absent before. The oppressive darkness that had plagued the haunted murder house was nowhere to be found, replaced instead by a comforting warmth that seemed to emanate from every corner. Confusion clouded my thoughts as I struggled to make sense of the situation. How could I be back in my own bedroom when just moments ago I had been standing on the threshold of a desolate abyss? And then, as if in answer to my unspoken question, I caught sight of something out of the corner of my eye, a glimmer of light shining through the window, casting dancing shadows on the walls. With a sense of dawning realization, I approached the window and peered outside, my breath catching in my throat as I took in the scene before me. The garden, the same lush, vibrant garden that I had seen on the other side of the doorway, stretched out before me, bathed in the soft light of the sun. Only something wasn't quite right. As I turned from the window, my heart skipped a beat as I beheld the radiant figures of Emily and her mother standing before me in the room. Their presence filled the space with an otherworldly glow, like ethereal beings from a realm beyond mortal they stood before me, bathed in the soft light that seemed to emanate from their very beings, their forms shimmering with an otherworldly luminescence. It was as if they had transcended the bounds of mortality, becoming something more than human, something divine. As I gazed upon them in awe, a sense of peace washed over me, filling the room with a tangible presence that enveloped me like a warm embrace. In their presence, 
I felt a profound sense of belonging, as if I had finally found my place in the world. We were too late, Emily said as she pointed her finger. As Emily's words echoed through the room, a chill ran down my spine, and I followed her pointed finger to the bed. Dread coiled in the pit of my stomach as I beheld the sight before me. Lying motionless on the bed was a figure, a spectral form bathed in an eerie glow, its features twisted in agony. It was as if time itself had frozen, preserving the moment of death for all eternity. A wave of shock and disbelief washed over me as I recoiled in horror, my hand frozen in midair as I beheld the ghastly sight before me. There, lying on the bed, was my own lifeless form, its pallid features twisted in an expression of agony and my wrists stained crimson with blood. I staggered back, the world spinning around me as I struggled to make sense of what I was seeing. How could this be? Was this some twisted trick of fate, a glimpse into a future that had yet to unfold? But as I stared at the figure before me, a dawning realization washed over me like a tidal wave. This was no glimpse into the future. This was a reflection of the past, a haunting reminder of the darkness that had once consumed me. Memories flooded my mind, fragments of a life filled with pain and despair. The whispers, the shadows, the relentless pursuit, they had all been manifestations of the turmoil that had raged within me, driving me to the brink of madness. And now, as I stood face to face with my own mortality, I knew that I could no longer deny the truth. The house had taken me as well. I wander the halls of my tomb now, my spectral form bound to its cursed confines for eternity. I am no longer a prisoner of the darkness, but a guardian of its secrets, a witness to the tragedies that unfold within its walls. As I drift through the empty corridors, I can't help but wonder what awaits the next inhabitant of the old mansion. Will they heed the warnings whispered in the shadows, or will they fall victim to the same fate that befell me? I watch and wait, hoping that they are not fools like I was, hoping that they can see through the facade and uncover the truth that lies hidden beneath its surface. For deep within its corridors lies the key to setting us all free, the truth behind the tragedies that have plagued the house for generations, the sins that have tainted its walls with blood and despair. And as I stand vigil in the darkness, I know that I will do whatever it takes to guide the next inhabitant on their journey, to ensure that they do not suffer the same fate that I did. In the house, redemption is possible, but only for those brave enough to confront the darkness and face the demons of the past. And as I watch and wait, I cling to the hope that one day, someone will come along who is worthy of setting us all free. Thank you for listening to the story. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon to meet us again and hear more stories like this. Bye for now. 
If you like our story, subscribe English Practice Stories channel and click the bell icon.